I'm Aaron Maté sitting in for Jimmy Dore here with Misha Pollan and Americans comedian Kurt Metzger. And uh, here is the latest from Congress. We elect them to work on issues that impact people's lives. But guess how they're spending their time? They're spending their time playing war games, specifically with China. And here's ABC News covering it. First, with what Joe Biden has to say about Taiwan. Taiwan makes their own judgments about their independence. We are not moving. We're not encouraging them being independent. We're not. Let, that's their decision. But would U.S. forces defend the island? Yes, if in fact there was an unprecedented attack. So unlike Ukraine, to be clear, sir, U.S. forces, U.S. men and women, would defend Taiwan in the event of a Chinese invasion? Yes. He sounds pretty confused when he says that, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> did they walk that back? <laughs> they did try to walk that back, yes. But that didn't stop some members of Congress from playing uh, a war game, mapping out how a war with China would oh, go. I remember that. Now, how long ago was this? I remember this. We got a new one now. There's a new war game. Oh, it's a brand new one. It's like Warhammer 40K <laughs> with these people. Okay. President Biden last fall saying for the first time that if China invades Taiwan, the U.S. would send troops to defend it. It's an invasion many experts predict could happen in this decade. We got a fascinating inside look this week at how members on the House China Committee are gaming out war scenarios. In the sky, on the sea. China staging combat exercises, a show of force, a warning that a potential blockade of Taiwan could be coming. The Chinese army even releasing this simulation of how they'd attack the nearby island, a self-governed democracy. (laughs) That's not a, that's the sim. we'll shoot stuff at it. Is that really the the simulation? See, here's- Lasers. we We would aim at Taiwan. (laughs) <laughs> that China claims as its own territory. But on Capitol Hill this week, lawmakers staged their own simulation. Tonight oh is not about a desire for war. <clears throat> it's certainly not about playing frivolous games. It's about prevent war games. China games. committee... Ch- what? <laughs> prevent war games. Let's do a war game to prevent war. What in the... Okay, <laughs> So the value of a war game in their context is yeah. in case we're, so we're prepared in case of a war, we have a game plan that we game out. Yes. Right? Yes. And so to why, see what, yeah. why would you do that on TV? Well, the real reason, as we're going to see, is to justify more spending on weapons. That's, uh, that's the ultimate goal here. As we'll see. They they Mike Gap- monopoly in the- yeah, exactly. <laughs> and ranking member Raja Krishnamurthy set up the exercise with the Center for New American Security. This game is going to be a Chinese invasion of Taiwan set in 2027. What exactly do we know right now about their mobilization effort? Members from both sides of the aisle coming together, politics set aside. Isn't that touching? Isn't that touching? Something truly useless. <laughs> and also, why are lawmakers doing this? Like the Pentagon does war games. Why are members of Congress, people yeah, from Wisconsin and Cal- across the country, what role do they have to game out a war? They're not going to be in the command center fighting the war. Well, so okay, why are they so for TV, right? But yeah. like, I, that's I don't know. It's very strange. <laughs> Well, they're going to show us. There's Virginia Republican Robert Whitman and Massachusetts Democrat Jake Auchincloss. Wait, she is on point reading these ridiculous names. (laughs) Auchincloss, you know, we all know of his genius military mind when it comes to uh, the Chinese military. I mean, he's a brilliant strategist. He is? No, I'm kidding. (laughs) The members taking on the role of advisors to the president. What if we communicated to expats and students from China right now? This is part of what you get to decide. That's Stacey Pettijohn, a senior fellow from CNAS, acting... What? She's the game master. As the game master. Oh, my God. They're playing D&D? <laughs> um, what is, okay, she, that, the last time I heard about a senior fellow from something, it was that Stanford CIA woman uh-huh, that's yeah. censoring things. What is she a fellow of? The so CNAS is a Center for New American Security, and uh, we're going to show so their funders the CIA? are. It's pretty much, yes. Yeah. It's, it's a revolving door of all ex-Pentagon people, and they're funded by the military-industrial complex, of course. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs can't pick up the phone and talk to his PLA counterpart. Correct. Unfortunately, General Holmes is cut off. 
Retired General Mike Holmes is playing the role of chairman of the Joint Chiefs, laying out to members what military options there are. This is like Dungeons and Dragons. This is exactly D&D, but for grown-ups, for elected like that members YouTube, of Congress. What's, I don't remember what it's called. There's a guy with long hair and all these actors play Dungeons and Dragons like this. And it sounds just like this. Like, no, you can't call <laughs> roll saving throw. That's so, okay. Yeah. From a distance is that you preserve and protect your forces. But diplomatic and economic options are on the table as well. There's even a board game. There's even, there's even pieces of the board game. It's totally D&D or risk. Well, d- yeah. We have our allies agreed to take part in economic activities with us um, as a precursor to these conversations. Has there been any activity at the United Nations yet? You see After Rokana's debating face. how the U.S. That's right, Ro Khan is there in the background. Yeah, they yeah. look like he's like, he knows this is like really for nerds, what he's at. <laughs> and should react, lawmakers took a vote. Yeah. There's Ro, yeah, you see it back there. Yeah, you guys are yeah. such, <laughs> guys are such <laughs> fucking nerds. <I> <laughs> Or maybe he also knows that people like us are going to see this and make fun of him for being a part I of mean, this. I mean, it looks like he's looking right at me while I laugh at him. <laughs> Announcing their move. Okay. We will be standing with our friends in Taiwan. We have forces in the region that are pre-positioned. We're surging forces in the region. We are also prepared to impose maximum economic pressure in the event of an invasion, including sanctions against most major Chinese banks, including kicking China off the SWIFT system. But wait a minute. Chinese authorities, played by CNAS staffers, quickly counter, surging troops, forcing a communications blackout in Taiwan, and banning exports of electronic goods to the U.S. What about sending a so spy that means balloon? we are going... <laughs> <laughs> After companies like Apple... Dell, HP. You want a new iPhone? Guess what? You're not going to get it. Lots of Why quest- was her eyelashes connected <laughs> to her eyebrows? Her eyes were they crazy. Were, the eyelashes came up <laughs> and connected to the... That's what my eyebrows could do if I let them. <laughs> Lots of lessons. It was remarkable to see all of you there working together. It's not a view <laughs> we often get. We, we see you in hearings, we see you on TV, but... This is a group that is really working together. Again, oh nothing brings both parties together like <laughs> war. We're gonna, nothing. Uh, oh. Trying to. And again, ultimately, we're hoping to generate creative ideas that can pass this Congress for what we can do uh, to enhance uh, deterrence. So He wants creative ideas to enhance deterrence, which means more ways to justify spending on the military. Did you ever see the Chinese? So I was watching... Uh, a thing about you, China, their version of like getting tough congressmen. The uh, they call it Wolf Warrior diplomacy. After that movie, Wolf, you ever see Wolf Warrior? Yeah, yeah. It's like they're Rambo. It's really amazing. It's almost like Rambo three, but a Chinese version of it. And then they have. I'm just imagining if like watching them do this have a have a game of Risk <laughs> for the, for TV and some like it's so. What I was watching is Wolf Warrior diplomacy thing. It's all about how crazy, and it did look crazy. And every time I watch this stuff we're doing, it looks exactly like that, and except not as cool. Well, uh, Kurt, to answer your question about where is all this headed, like what is the point of us, here it is. Here is Congressmember Mike Gallagher, that Republican co-chair of the committee we saw. Here's a video he put out about what his takeaway is from this war game. <clears throat> if we want to have a hope of stopping World War III, we need to therefore arm Taiwan to the teeth. We have to arm Taiwan to the teeth. That's the takeaway from this war game. Right now, and clear the $19 billion worth oh, okay. of foreign military sales backlog. That is frankly an embarrassment. So we haven't cleared some $19 billion in military spending, and that is an embarrassment, according to It's an embarrassment government. we haven't spent all of the money <laughs> that we have on some kind of war. There's still some amount we've held back. <laughs> Wow. Something I've talked with every Taiwanese leader about. We also need to reinvigorate our defense industrial base and start cranking out critical munitions like a long range anti ship missile. We're not making enough weapons. We're not spending enough on weapons. What if we made those <laughs> microchips and then we didn't have to go and fight for their microchips yeah, or whatever hey. the hell this is about? <laughs> I bet you 19 billion could put a well, nice down payment what is on it, microchips. What are they called? Semiconductors and something? I guess well, the semiconductors and I don't think it has a, is a chip or it's that and chips, but Taiwan. Yeah. Yeah. So they have the chips. China already started refiguring their economy to 
surpass Taiwan <laughs> making those chips. So they don't need to, in, they're not going to need to invade Taiwan to get the microchips. We shipped all of our chem manufacturing right. out to Taiwan. So it, <laughs> I, we could have prepared that from ahead of time, just making them here, couldn't we? Or is yeah, but that wouldn't too much? mean any money for the military industrial complex, which is what this guy is really pushing. It's also imperative to get our allies and partners on board with the idea of economic deterrence long before the shooting starts. Russian sanctions negotiations will look like a cakewalk in comparison to what we'd have to put together against the CCP. All the more reason we put it together now. In previous war games, I've seen how quickly the military... So the Russia proxy war, that's going to be a cakewalk compared to what we have planned for China. That's pretty much his, his message here side escalates what took me aback in this game was how quickly the economic side escalated by day six global trade had ground to a complete halt and we kicked chinese banks off the swift system markets were tanking and the prc's aggression had created an economic and humanitarian catastrophe companies need to prepare for this in the game failing to do so oh my is a dereliction of their fiduciary duties the biggest lesson though well to paraphrase eisenhower the only way to win this war is to prevent it and that means strengthening deterrence and making it clear to Xi Jinping that attacking Taiwan would be a disastrous mistake. Why would they attack Taiwan unless we were putting a bunch of weapons into exactly, it? Exactly, exactly. They're trying they're claiming they want to stop a war in Taiwan by doing everything they can to make one happen. Here's Michael Tracy, if we want to have a hope of stopping World War III, we need to therefore arm Taiwan to the teeth right now. He's quoting Mike Gallagher. Very curious, for certain elected officials, stopping war always seems to involve ramping up weapons production and military deployments. Is this like what, how we arm everyone to stop shootings here? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And here is, uh, this is the Center for New American Security, CNAS, who carries out this game, which of course ABC News will never tell you who funds them, but it's the usual suspects, Northrop Grumman, the Pentagon. Open philanthropy. Open philanthropy. I'm pretty sure that's. <laughs> nice that's, philanthropy, guys. <laughs> yeah. Smith Richardson, that comes from pharma money. Uh, Lockheed Martin, the Pentagon, the Pentagon. George Soros' Open Society Foundation. Eric and Wendy Schmidt, that's Google. The usual suspects. Here's Caitlin Johnstone. Now, this is going to surprise you and astonish you and take you aback. But believe it or not, <laughs> war, the war game conducted by the weapons industry funded think tank has revealed that Taiwan is going to need a lot more weapons. <laughs> and this is especially being pushed by Republicans who are really gung-ho for a war with China. I think war with Russia, that's more the domain of Democrats, but Republicans really want <laughs> war with China. Here's Kevin McCarthy. And Maria, I'm very concerned that it looks a lot like 1936 all over again, an axis of power of Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran bounding together against yeah. the freedom and values of what America represents. Remember, President Xi has only left his country one time during the pandemic, wow. and that was for them all to meet. The yeah. last time we had a Democrat administration, they allowed Russia back into the Middle East. Now yeah. they're bringing China in as a leader. What he means by that, by the way, is he's talking about when Obama, he says, allowed Russia back into the Middle East. He means when Obama waged a dirty war on Syria, uh, which empowered sectarian death squads, Ob uh, Russia intervened to stop those death squads. So that's what he means by letting Russia back into the Middle East. And we're watching our allies after what happened in Afghanistan, yeah. that the chancellor of Germany moves to, goes to China to talk to them. We've watched Saudi Arabia try to build a better relationship with China. Yeah. That's because the lack of strength of our leadership in America, and that becomes from an economic and also from our energy policy yeah. and others. So that's uh, the bipartisan consensus right now, you know, basically invoking the Nazis talking about a new axis of power, uh, China, Russia, North Korea, Iran. And this is happening to this, and, and we've covered this here on, on the Jimmy Dore Show. Breaking 200 U.S. military trainers arrived in Taiwan today, 80% from the U.S. Army. This comes after the Wall Street Journal reported that Biden would be sending one, one to 200 troops to Taiwan, quadrupling the amount at the time. And Danny Haifang also pointed out that if U.S. If the U.S. can station troops in Taiwan, China should be allowed to station troops in Puerto Rico. It's only fair. And yeah, imagine the reaction if we saw China talking, you know, engaging in war games uh, about fighting the U.S. over Puerto Rico or some other place near the U.S. 
or that the U.S. claims possession of. Uh, the reaction would be far different. But entertaining war with China is par for the course to the point where our media celebrates it if both parties come together to do it. Were you supposed to like, like, like you know, acknowledge that we have an empire, but not say it, <laughs> but knowing your heart is empire that has to be defended, but not put in those terms because we're the good ones in Star Wars, right? <laughs> so <laughs> it's all about stopping World War Three. That's what they. That's how they got to sell it. We're telling jokes in Nashville, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Cohoes, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Baltimore, Chicago, Rosemont, San Diego, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com to see get a link for all those tickets. Plus, you can watch my new special. COVID lies are funny. <laughs> <laughs>